Hey mama, are you a multi-passionate mom who is juggling all the things, nursing a baby, battling laundry, trying to keep it together and keep a spicy marriage, and feeling like you're filling all of it? What's up? I'm Ashley Carroll. I'm here to hold your hand through this process because I believe when you're ready to take control of your life, beat the limiting excuses, step into your own power, you can not only survive, but you can thrive. But you're going to have to show up for yourself. It's time for me to tough love your way through prioritization, taking self-care seriously, getting rid of excuses, reconnecting with your family, kids, and spouse, and quite honestly, learning to love the chaos because the glory is in the journey. It's in the mess. In this podcast, you will find balance for busy mamas, navigating mom guilt, time management strategies, and everything in between with no fluff and lots of fun. Let's go. Hey girl, I'm excited to tell you that I'm bringing back the coaching in a new, fresh, exciting way for the rest of 2020. I have a couple spots where I'm offering get unstuck coaching sessions. How many of you just feel stuck? Your life is normal. You feel like you're not enough. Like there's something missing. Like you can't seem to break through with your spouse. You've forgotten who you are besides a constant wiping place for little hands and boogies and all the things. And you feel like your life is like a hot mess express. Trust me, if you've been using the hashtag a little too much lately, this is for you. I believe as God-led moms, we can live at the 1%. We can be different than the, than the 99. And we can be unstuck if we decide to begin taking action, living life with intention and coming up with a plan to be different than the world says we have to be. If you're ready for some tough love to rise above the mundane, to blast the limiting excuses and climb out of the normal bucket and begin to live into your full potential in motherhood, in life, in your marriage, and heck, even your business. I mean, imagine how great it would be to actually thrive instead of just getting by and surviving. It's your time to shine. Stop letting this worldly normalization of that's just how it is when you have kids or when you get married, that's just how it is. Or these maybe when or I wish I could baloney mumbo jumbo keep you from thriving and really enjoying this one life. You're going to have one hour sessions with me. Lay it all out there. I'm going to tough love you. I'm going to give you a roadmap to getting unstuck. Go to theashcarol.com slash get unstuck and let's get started. Let's go. It's time for you to thrive instead of survive, sister. Hey, ladies, this is going to be a little PSA announcement that I feel like I have to share and it may come off as extremely rude or um, let's say gutsy to go here but we're gonna do it so if your kiddos are listening not the time let's listen to this episode at another time and there are plenty of family gratitude challenges and other things that are kid appropriate but this episode is not one of those so today let's sit down let's have our tea let's let's grab let's grab some tea shall we grab your coffee but you're needed you're gonna need to sit down for this one okay so this is for my mom friends who are just struggling somewhere along the way we've lost our sense of value we feel like you know we've been rocking the sweatpants the hot mess express hashtag is our uh you know trademark at this point we can't remember the last time we washed our hair let alone the last time we got you know frisky in the bed with our spouse um and then maybe our marriage just isn't so hot right now like it's not going great or maybe our dating life isn't really going great But we have this one tool, like I said, guys, (laughs) PSA, this is not an episode for kids. So if they're still listening, now's the time definitely to turn off. Okay. But we have this one thing that we've known how to use. We feel like it's powerful. We feel like it brings things back in because our husband is or our significant other, whoever is drawn to it. Um, And we feel like this is the one tool I have to control this situation. Moms, we have to stop using what's in between our legs as arsenal to keep a man or fix our marriage. There, I said it. As the young kids say these days, don't at me, okay? I'm dead serious. This is such a toxic behavior and it's such a self-sabotaging behavior. And I can say that because I used to do it. Because I used to feel like, you know what? When I was in this lifestyle of low self-esteem, low self-worth, low, you know, I would think, you know what? This is the one thing that I have. And if they want me in that way, like, you know, and you expect 
all the things afterwards. Like you expect reconnection. You expect things to go better. I don't, I don't know why we feel that way somehow because in that moment you feel connected and you hope it's going to last, right? And you hope that they want it or that they remember how great it is with you. But here's the deal. Unless you're going to hang out in missionary position for the duration of your marriage, sis, that plan is going to leave you emotionally depleted, constantly breaking your self-esteem. It's going to constantly leave you feeling broken, uh, not knowing what to do. Also very used, violated, um, and putting you're going to constantly be putting back together the pieces after you use it in such a way because it wasn't meant for that. It's meant for intimacy and something beautiful and very vulnerable and very um, sacred. And then when we utilize it in the way that it's not meant to be utilized, like as a tool or as a weapon, then we become resentful of um, something that is meant to be so uniting and beautiful. Most sex wars, as we're going to call it, come as a result of long overdue communication issues. So if you are using it as a tool to um, get your way, so you're withholding, uh, or you're trying to control the situation and bring comfort or security to yourself by using it to what you feel like is reeling them back in, you know, like they're strain and you're using it to draw them back home. It's not going to solve your problems. We have to get to the root problem. It's a holistic approach and no matter what area of our life we go at it, because if we just mask the, sim- mask the symptoms, which is what using your lady bits is doing in a situation where you're manipulating or you're trying to control or you're trying to solve a problem with that, then you're going to, like I said, be left with brokenness. You're going to feel depleted. You're going to feel violated. And the worst part is that he's going to realize you aren't the only one with what he needs. We think that we can like dangle it in front of them. And it's like this magical thing that, oh my gosh, we're the only ones who have this and you don't know how good you've got it. Wrong. (laughs) If they start to catch on that you're using it in such a way, then guess what? They'll find an easier way to get it with somebody who isn't using it as a tool, a manipulation, a way of controlling, a way of, um, you know, doing... (laughs) like this little mind game with it, okay? They're going to find an easier way. They also have needs that they can meet in a different way. So if you think that that is the angle you're going to come at them with it and you're going to win this round, no, you're going to lose. Here's another thing that it's going to do. It's going to take the intimacy and the fun away from that sacred union in your relationship, It's something that's meant to be for so much good, so much beautifulness, so much unity, and you're tainting it. You're using it and utilizing it in a way that it wasn't meant to be utilized. And not only are you going to resent and have issues moving forward with intimacy because you've used it in this way and because you've been then treated in a certain way, you've gotten a certain uh, response that wasn't expected or that came from it, then yeah, moving forward, it's not going to be the same for you. It's not going to be special and romantic. And this, you know, joining of two people who are in love, who are committed, who are dedicated to each other. And it's no longer fun. It's traumatic. It's toxic. And it leaves you so, so broken. Another thing is that, you know, he'll pick fights just to get it. If he knows that, okay, you're using it as a tool of, Um, or you're only giving it as this like makeup, um, kind of reminder thing, then yeah, he's going to do what he needs to do to get it because other otherwise you're withholding it from him. Y'all get where I'm going with this because I feel like this is, this is actually alarmingly common in our marriages because when we feel a lack of control in all the other areas, we have this one thing that never leaves us that can be utilized and we're like, Hey, you know, And also, you know, we want to feel wanted. So, hey, like, I don't shame you for that. And I'm not shaming you for any of this situation. I just want to make you aware because your heart deserves so much better. Your body deserves so much better. And then if you were to think of your daughters in this position, I think you would be heartbroken if your daughter walked into your room right now, sat next to you in the car right now, was sitting with you on the bed right now and telling you, mom, man. I can't get him to stay. I can't get him to want to be a part of this marriage. And no matter how much I give him, no matter how much of myself I pour out, no matter 
how I use my most vulnerable piece of me, he still wants to leave me. You would be heartbroken. You would be sitting there, tears, trying to hold your baby, and you would try to tell her that she deserves better. She needs to want better, right? Like you would want all the healing for her in the world in that moment. And so I want to be that mama bear for you right now. Because if you're in a marriage or a relationship, and this is you, and you could see yourself in that position, and you're like, oh gosh, I'm doing that. We have to change. We have to make some changes because like I said, no matter how many times you do this, you're still going to walk away from the bedroom with the same problems as you walked in. The same issues are still going to come. The infidelity is still going to be there. The um, lack of commitment is still going to be there. And it's not going to solve anything. The only thing that it's going to do is leave you feeling isolated, broken, lonely, and it's going to bring you down. You're going to go so deep down into a hole and, and I'm afraid that you won't be able to come out of it. And so I'm here to tell you, we got to snap out of it right now. We got to start making the changes, start utilizing the tools that we know that we have. You can go back and listen to this podcast and I've given you thousands of tips and tools to start making your marriage better. And those we got, we have to do the hard work because it'll pay off. It's little baby steps every day that help us to impact and flourish in our marriages that is long lasting and that is going to bring fruitfulness in your marriage. Now, it takes two, right, to show up to this to this union. And at the end of the day, I believe that it takes two, you know, like it takes two to make a thing go round. You know, so it takes two. So like at the end of the day, if you are showing up a thousand percent and you're like, I'm going to do this, I'm all in. I'm going to forgive. I'm all in. I won't hold them hostage to the past mistakes. I'm all in. I'm going to start looking forward instead of looking backwards. I won't be resentful. I'm not going to, we're going to heal. We're going to work on all these things. Like you're showing up a thousand percent and he's just not having it. Well, then I suggest you need to work on finding a therapist, finding a third party professional help to get involved. Because at some point it becomes unhealthy when there is only one person doing all the work and showing up for their marriage. But we cannot just sit back and hope that our marriage will heal itself after we've tried all the things or if we've tried nothing at all. Time does not heal. We have to actually dig deep, open up the wounds and heal from the inside out. You can't put duct tape over a broken leg and hope that it comes back together and works in a functional and healthy way, which is what I think that we're trying to do a lot of the times in our marriage. It doesn't work. Duct tape works for a lot of things, but it ain't gonna work. (laughs) It's not gonna work for this. So then I wanna ask you a lot of the times we bring another baby into this situation or we hope that somehow a baby will bring unity and it'll remind us of this like family unit that we have together. A baby is the most draining thing ever and it actually legit, there have been studies shown that marital connection actually nosedives after you have a baby, which makes sense because when a baby comes, they need you. They need all your attention. They're waking up at night. You're stressed out. You're worried. Like, Can you remember when you had a newborn and you were like disheveled and covered in spit up and, you know, especially when you have multiple kids. So if we think that bringing another life into our life, into our marriage is going to help us reconcile, that's a big no, no, because it's not going to, it will not bring the man home. It will not make him realize how much he loves you. It will not make him realize how great of a family you guys are. No, it's just bringing another life in to an unstable and a home and a lot of uncertainty about his mom and dad. I know, I know. I'm probably going to get a thousand emails for this for this episode, but I'm willing to take the heat because I'm willing to have these conversations with you guys. Um, because, you know, when I was dating, I had this very close-minded, very, um, you know, I was in a toxic place in my self-love journey. Um, how I viewed myself, how I viewed relationships. I just had a very unhealthy uh, perspective. And I used to think that's all there was. Like you, you know, I got a quick job that could pay a decent amount. And then I became a wife to become a mother 
And I just thought somehow getting married would help my relationship, you know? So like, it's like, oh, let's rush this because then if, if we're married, it'll, it'll get better. Somehow it'll be okay. Okay. And then when you go to the next step or when you become serious and you're living like roommates or you're doing this, you know, thing that you think is a healthy relationship and then you're like, okay, well, that's not working. So there must be something else. We got to do the next step to make him want to be in this more. And that's to bring a baby into this life. And that's the furthest, that's the furthest thing to heal a relationship. You guys have to both be committed already. We need to be working towards a common goal already. We need to be working towards a healthy marriage, a healthy relationship already. We need to be working on ourselves and healing ourselves before we bring another life into this relationship because it impacts them. They don't choose us. We choose to bring them into this. And so if you think from your child's perspective, would you want to be brought into that situation? Would you want, would you willingly want to go into a relationship where your parents were uncertain about who they were, where they were not being faithful to each other, where you didn't know if daddy was going to come home every day, or you didn't know if they were going to throw stuff at each other, or if they were going to love each other that day, like you wouldn't want to be run into that situation. So we have to be very serious and very conscious about whether or not we need to bring another child into our relationship. And if our relationship is not in a healthy place, then we need to take measures to make sure that we will not bring a child into that relationship just yet. A baby will not make our partners pay more attention to us. In fact, studies have shown that it drives men away even more because of your fear of him leaving. Because despite you feeling like you have this temporary solution that's so beautiful and is, it's so magical and things might be great that first week because he's excited. It's a new baby and he loves babies. It's part of him. He can't help it. But still, who does he have to come home to? What kind of relationship is he in? right? Like it's not going to last if you guys don't work on the hard stuff and stop duct taping the broken leg. We have to fix it from the inside out. We have to put the pins in. It has to be casted. It's got to take days work, day in, day out. You have to like work on yourself. He has to work on himself. There has to be some sort of moving forward growth to continue to have a healthy relationship and also have your kids benefit from that. Otherwise, we do need to look at other alternatives. You do need to bring in somebody else to help you out. And if they don't want to participate or if you don't want to participate, well, then we've got a problem because then that right there tells me that you're not all in on saving this marriage and he's not all in on saving this marriage. And then maybe you guys really aren't willing to do the work that it takes to have a healthy relationship. And then I would say that definitely don't bring a kid into that kind of relationship, right? If you already have kids, if you're already in this space, hear me when I say that I love you, that I understand your mindset. I understand the struggle. I understand the pain. I understand you wanting to make it work. I understand that you love this person so much that it hurts so bad that they're rejecting you all the time or that they're not showing up for you in the way that they used to. And you miss that. I get it. I get it. And I'm saying get help. I'm saying if if you don't want to, then nobody else will. If he doesn't, you can't make him. We have to do what's right for our kiddos, for ourselves, for our um, mental wellness. So at the end of the day, you have the choice. You need to set the bar a little bit higher for you, sis. You're the one who sets that bar. It's only the people that show up to you that are going to meet it, right? Like if you're setting the bar low, and you come across somebody and they see this bar is low, do you think that they're going to go over and beyond that fence line? No, they're not going to, you know, they're not going to go for a 15 foot. They're not going to try to get over a 15 foot um, fence. If you have a little, I don't even know if this metaphor is good, but you know what I'm saying? Like nobody's going to go above and beyond if you already have the bar set so low that they can just walk in and walk out. So if nobody told you up until this point, hear me, you are worth more. You deserve more. You are the daughter of a king who made you and knitted you and every fiber of your being was purposely and wonderfully made. You deserve the best and he deserves the best, right? Like you both should be in a healthy and 
you know what, there, there is so much to unpack in all these little nuances that affect our marriages that I feel like we would have to go into separate um, episodes or separate nuances to get into these situations that involve like infidelity and uh, men who are struggling with certain things like pornography addiction and PTSD that affect our marriages. But in general, this is an in general conversation and I mean, I, even if any of those things do exist in your relationship, then I feel like if you can relate to anything that I just said, and also there are these other existing issues and traumas and factors that are affecting your marriage, then you need to get help. You need to find somebody. There are lots of free resources. There are lots of, you know, online resources. But if this is the um, factor or the basis of whether or not your marriage is going to survive, I'd say it's a pretty good investment to go ahead and try because at the end of the day, you can say, you know what? I gave it my all. We tried a hundred percent and we just can't heal from this. Or you're going to find that you guys do. And then you love each other again. You're happy again. There isn't any manipulation anymore. There isn't any fear of, um, abandonment or loss of, identity in your marriage you know and your your loving life again like don't you want that don't you think that he wants that and so today if you're listening to this episode and I'm hitting you hard I want to know I want you to know that you're not alone in this you're not a failure this isn't something that you need to blame yourself for this is something that we just need to pick ourselves up from our bootstraps and move forward. We need to say, today is the day I choose not to be a victim to my marriage anymore. I'm going to make the changes necessary that I need to change. And we need to have this conversation. We need to start moving forward and we need to start healing and finding a way to fix our marriage from the inside out. We're we're not going to do this duct tape thing anymore. We can't. We have to for not only ourselves, but for the babies that are involved, for our children, because they deserve us to show up 110% for them. And if we can't do that, then what are we doing this for? So I hope today this gives you a little kick in the butt in a lovingly way. Like I said, you knew when you were listening to this podcast, there was going to be a lot of tough love. And I'm telling you, this is probably one of the hardest episodes I've ever had to record. But I do it because I don't want to see you in the next 10 years or looking back in my mom community Facebook group and see posts from five years ago that you're in the same place as you were today back then and nothing's changing and we're adding more kiddos to the mix and now we're lost at what we're going to do because we think what divorce is on the brink and what are we going to do with our kids now they don't have a daddy around you know like all these things like I'm heartbroken for you but we can't approach problems when there is a seven alarm. Is that a thing? You guys are fire firefighter wives, so I don't know. But like, you know, one of the worst fires ever going on in our house. You can't come at it and be like, okay, I'm ready to do something now. Like, and then you have a little, a little sprinkling water can and you're like, help, help. You know, that's not going to work. When we see the sparks start to go off, we're like, oh crap, we need to do something right now. We need to fireproof this house. So... That is what I'm hoping to do with you today, no matter where you are, how bad your house is burning down. There is always help, right? That's what firefighters are for. That's what therapists are for, um, metaphorically, right? So therapists are there. You have, I suggest not just going to a friend because a friend is going to tell you what you want to hear because she's got your back, man. Like she's ready to tell you all the things that you want to, she thinks you want to hear about him and how he's such a liar and a cheat and a dirty, no good, blah, 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 right? No, you need to get somebody who actually can help you and give you perspective that you need and give you the steps and the process to heal in your marriage. There are tons of podcast resources out there for you. If you've had infidelity in your marriage, if you're considering divorce, um, I'm going to list those. I'm going to list some of those resources in the description of this podcast so that way you can go and find something. Um, If there's alcohol in your marriage, there's another good podcast. There are so many podcasts nowadays to help you um, figure out what your next steps are. Um, But that is getting off topic. I just want to make sure you have all the resources. So I want to end this episode with love, with kindness. I want you to give yourself grace. Okay, it's hard. Marriage is hard, especially if nobody gave you the manual. You didn't have an example of what a godly or good or fruitful marriage should look like. Hello, I've been there. Um, then it's like navigating 
in muddy waters. Like you can't see, you're using your hands, you're hoping that you don't touch anything disgusting, right? Like to (laughs) make your way through. So give yourself grace, forget about the rest and just look at what is my next step? What is our next step? And just every day, what is my next step? What is our next step? And then if you're fearful, if you're afraid, go through the what's the worst thing could happen exercise where like I always ask myself, what's the worst thing that can happen? Okay, I'm afraid to call this person on the phone. What's the worst thing that could happen? Well, I could, they could say hello. (laughs) What's the worst thing that could happen? Well, I could respond back, right? I could be really awkward, but so, you know, what's the worst thing that could happen? They could think I'm a weirdo. Okay, like, you know, like, What's the worst thing that could happen? I can ask my husband that we want to go to therapy. What's the worst thing that could happen? He can say no. That's the worst, right? You guys can have an argument about it. And then what happens? Like just what's the worst thing that could happen? What's the worst thing that happened? But if you don't, the, the results of if you don't do anything at all are much worse than the results of you going out of your comfort zone and doing what's necessary to find healing, not only for yourself, but for your marriage. Okay. All right. I love you. As always, get in those Facebook mom group, because if you need support, like that's where I can show up for you. We can show up for you as a community. We can help guide you in any way that we possibly can. Um, But you are not alone in this. I just want you to know that and give yourself lots and lots of hugs and grace today because you deserve it. But sister, more than anything, you deserve a man who loves you, respects you and all the things that you wish a man would do and feel and how he would treat your own daughter or son, you know, however you want your kids to be treated in their relationships, you deserve that same as well. So I leave this with you. I know it's heavy. Let's brush off, brush off our shoulders. We're not going to do what we did yesterday anymore. It's not. It's not working anymore. We've got to change. So today is a new day. We're going to make some changes. We're going to start to live our lives towards thriving instead of just surviving. All right. I love you. I'll catch you next time. Hey there, if you're still listening, I just wanted to give you a heads up that next week we're going to be starting our Get Unstuck series. So put on your big girl britches and we're about to get some work done. (laughs) We're about to get you unstuck and start thriving instead of surviving. Stop normalizing. That's just the way it is kind of life. And we're going to talk on the real some good juicy things. Oh my gosh, it's chaos in here. And we're going to get you unstuck. (laughs) All right, guys. Catch you next time.